Okay, welcome to lesson three of my um, learning basic programming lessons. Um, I'm going to try and talk a little louder because I know some people have been saying like you can't hear me talking a good bit like in things, but I'm sorry I've tried adjusting the input volume and all that and it doesn't seem to help a whole lot. Um, but anyway, um, in this lesson, we are going to be learning about loops and how to use them. The two types of loops we're going to be doing will be the for loop and a do loop. And also, I think I might also throw in arrays in here, because arrays are pretty simple, and really the only time you would ever use a loop is if you were going through an array. Of course, you could use it for other things like timing and whatnot, but... It's more often used to just like go through and parse information out of an array or something of the sort. Okay, so first off, I'm going to show you how to do arrays. Now, because, well, yeah, we got to do that before we can go into loops, so you get a good bit of understanding of what we're doing when we go to the loops. Okay, um, first off, to declare an array, it's really simple. It's just like declaring a variable. So we go dim my array and this is where the array part comes in you you can think of an array as kind of a container of variables now whatever the number I put in these parentheses here is how many spaces there are in this container so I'm just gonna put let's say nine for now so this array has I'm gonna declare it as an integer so we can just use numbers this array has nine, well actually it has ten spaces in it because it includes zero, so it's zero through nine. This array has ten spaces in it, and we can set each space in the array as if it was an individual uh, variable, but it goes, goes by the same name, you just de uh, define the number in the end to show which one you're talking about. Sorry if I just confused the hell out of you, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in just a second. So, um... Let's say we want to make the first uh, slot in my array equal 10 because I set it as an integer, as you can see here. So we're only going to use numbers for this. Um, let's say my array and slot 0 equals 10. Now, how do we see that that equals 10? Well, it's. I hope that most of you get this pretty easy because it's really it's really a simple concept it's just a uh, variable with basically slots in it and you just define which one you want to use so yeah so how do we see what um we just made my array zero okay we let's just do a little simple thing let's just do print my array which one well we want to do zero and whenever we do that let's put, make sure we put sleep here whenever we run that it should print 10 right here as you can see prints 10 because number in slot 0 of my array is 10 so that works now what what happens if we want to go and print 1 well we didn't have we didn't define a uh, slot 1 in my array yet so what should happen is it should come out and say hey uh this is 0 so yeah so let's go ahead and do that Yep, zero, because nothing is defined in array one, or er, the slot of my array in one. So, now what we're going to do is let's define something in my array one equals, let's make it 20, just so you know the difference. Now we're going to switch this back to zero, and then we're going to print both of them. Now what's going to happen? It's going to show 10, and then it's going to show 20 because it's printing 0, and then 1 of slots in it. Yeah, I hope you understand this because I know I'm not a very good uh, teacher or explainer of things, so I hope you're getting this. But as you can see, it went through and did that fine. So that's exactly how it should do it. And you should be able to get the rest of it fine. Like, we can just go my array, let's say 9 equals 200, and then print. Uh, print my array 9 and that'll should show 200 yep see there we go so that's basically how arrays are used it's really simple you can do you could put like 
as many numbers in an array as you want. Like, yeah, I went a little crazy there, but you could do that if you really wanted to. And, well, you might think that going through it like this with that many numbers would be insane, which it would, which is why we have loops. So now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all this. And now we're going to go into loops. Now, in when I show you these loops, um, we're still going to be using arrays because it's the most probably the most often used way or reason for using a loop to do anything. So let's declare my array. Let's make it something this time, something else this time. Let's say um, just hmm, birds. Yeah, there we go. Birds is our variable, and let's say there are 1,000, if you include zero, which it does, so there are 1,000 birds in the array kind of thing. Yeah, this might confuse you, so just forgive me if it does confuse me when we're saying, like, 900 birds and whatnot, because, yeah. Anyway, um, let's declare this as an integer so we can just make it... Um, Think of the array as the value of birds. Just, yeah, that might unconfuse you a little bit. Um, okay, so now we have our array declared and all that. And what we're going to do in this loop, the first kind of loop I'm going to show you is a for loop. And what, what it does is it, well, depending on how you do it, it'll go, it'll take a variable and go until a specified number is reached. So here I'll just show you because it might be it's a little hard for me to explain without just showing you the code. So let's say we need to de declare a variable uh, for the loop to use as its number. So we can say for i equals zero. So the first number it's going to start with is zero. And then it's going to go to 999. And we're going to go to 999 because that's how many slots there are in birds. So for i equals 0 to 999, and let's just go ahead down here and go to next i. Now what this is going to do is it's going to go to this, it's going to go through the code in here as soon as I add it in here, and then it's go to next i. And when it goes to next i, it adds 1 to i right here. Like i will equal 1, and for each loop it goes through, it'll keep adding 1 each time it goes through the loop. And when it gets to 999, the loop will stop because that's really all you want it to do. So, for this, what we're going to do is we're going to, let's just make each variable in birds equal 1. So, say birds i equals 1. Now, because I did this in here, anything can be used to define which slot in the array you're talking about. So, because i is... Um, one is added to i each time it goes through the loop, i right here will change. So each time it goes through the loop, it'll be one up on the array. So the first loop, it'll be birds slot zero. Second loop, birds slot um, one. Third loop, birds slot three. And it'll make every slot in birds all the way up to 999 equal one. And while you might not be able to see it do anything in here because, well, we have no print statements or anything like that to show you what's going on. I can go ahead and do that. Now, let me do print birds i. Now this is going to spit out a crap load of numbers really quick just because it's going to go through the array like that. And basically all you're going to see is ones down the screen. But that shows us that the loop is working and it goes through it every time and adds one to the birds array each slot in it 999 times to every slot pretty much. So we hit F5 and if you saw the scroll bar go down like instantly you can see that really all there is is ones there because that's all we tell it to do. Now let's say we wanted to we wanted to make them different numbers. Let's say that because one it's kinda bland. Yeah. Kinda lame. So Let's say each time it goes through the loop, we want birds to equal i plus 1. So, 
Actually, make it. let's make it I times 2 so you can tell a big difference. So the first time it's going to go through, it's going to go in, it's going to... Well, first, uh, I is going to equal 0. So the first time it goes through the loop, it's going to be birds equals I, which is going to be 0, times 2. So 0 times 2 is going to be 0. The very first loop, it's going to be 0. And then right here, it's going to print 0 because that's what that variable equals. So, uh, do not message me. People are messaging me right now, and I'm trying to do a lesson. Okay, so, um, let me just go ahead and get off aim. Um, sorry about that. Okay, now, where were we? Okay, so it's going to go through that, and it's going to add 1 to each this, and then it's going to multiply times 2 for each variable in the array. Yeah. So, now when we go do this, it's going to go down instantly, pretty much. Well, pretty much instantly, it goes down too quick to see. But you can see that it's got crap load of numbers, and, mm, oh, it must have... It can't even scroll the whole way up because there's too many numbers. There's a bunch. Now, why does it say 1998 down here? Because, well, if we take 999 times 2... Let me break out the calculator here real quick. It should equal 1998. There we go. So the very last one it went through, which was 999, it took birds value, uh, slot 999 times, oh no, now somebody's messaging me on Skype. Um, okay, so it goes to birds, slot 999, i equals 999 because it's in the loop. 99 times 2, and then it prints that value, which is what birds 999 equals. So, yeah. I really hope I didn't confuse the hell out of you, um, watchers, because I, yeah, I've already said I'm not a very good teacher, and if I did confuse you, um, I'm sorry, just ask a question in the comment, in, yeah, the comments if you don't get something, and I'll try to help. So, yeah, that's the for loop. Now, the next kind of loop we're going to do, let's go ahead and close this. The next kind of loop we're going to do is a do loop. Now, what the do loop is, is it's not really like the for loop because it doesn't have a set, it doesn't go to any set number. It waits for a condition to be met, and then it'll stop looping. So, let's just... Um, we're going to set this up a little bit different. Let's say dim uh, um, word as string. We're not going to use an array in this because, well, we can use arrays in the do loop, but we don't have to, and I'm not going to in this because you usually wouldn't use a do loop with an array, at least the conventional way. I wouldn't, at least. I don't know about many other people, but... Okay, now, the way the do loop works is... We do do until word equals hi. Now, we go down here, it's just a loop. So this is, at least I believe, this might not work, and if it doesn't, forgive me because I'm just doing it the way I would code it in Visual Basic, and if this doesn't work, I'm going to be confused, and I'm going to have to pause it and go look up how it's done in Free Basic. Um, but I'm hoping this will work. So what this should do is it'll do the loop until word equals high. Now, how is it going to get the high? Well, each time it loops, we're going to take... Here, let's dim my input as string. Um, we're going to take input, say, enter a word, and we're going to put that in my input. And... Well, I could have done this a different way, but now we're just going to say word equals my input. So, what this is going to do is it's going to loop through, it's going to ask me to type a word, and it'll keep asking me to type a word until I type hi. As soon as I type hi, it's going to stop doing the loop, and the program will most likely close because I don't have a sleep statement at the end. But at least that way it'll be most noticeable. So we go ahead and run it and it says enter a word let's say yo okay it doesn't equal high let's say poopy not high um yellow 
it's not high. Now if we type high, the program closes. See, it worked perfectly. Yes! Okay, um, I'm happy, because it's weird why it didn't highlight that word automatically, like it does these, doesn't make them bold. But anyway, you can see that the loop worked, and it worked absolutely fine. Now, we can do something else in here. Let's um, go ahead and restart this. Let's uh, let's dim the num as integer. And what we're going to do in this do loop, I'm just doing another example just because I can. What we're going to do in this do loop is we're going to add 1 to the num every time it goes through the loop. And we're going to do the loop until it equals 2,000. Now you could do this with an array if you really wanted to, but it's just easier to use a for loop. At least I think it's easier. So, I'm going to say do until the num equals 2,000. I think that's what I said, but if not, just bear, me, bear with me. Okay, and now in the loop, we're going to the num equals the num plus 1. Loop. Now, just to know, just so we know when it gets to the end of the loop, we're going to put print it's done down here and sleep. So it's going to go through, it's going to add over and over, and whenever it gets done, it'll say it's done and wait for us to close it. So you won't be able to see it doing the loop or anything like that because I don't have any print statements in here, but I'll do that in a second just so you can see. But when we do the loop, it's done. It did it pretty much instantly, so it obviously added up all the numbers, added 1 to the num, each time it went through the loop until it equals 2,000, sorry, and then it finished, and that's really all it does. Now we can say print the num, and what it'll do is it'll just show us what the num equals each time it goes through the loop, pretty much the same way the uh, for loop we did a minute ago showed us. So we do that again, goes through it pretty much instantly, and as you can see, it stopped at 2,000. It went through all the numbers that it added up to. Got to 2,000. It finished. It's done. That's really all there is to it. So that's how you do loops. Now, you could do you could use loops for a lot of things, but I'm not going to really dive into that right now. Like maybe some other time when we write like a text-based game or something, I might use a loop to do something else. But that's pretty much it for loops right now. I can't think of any other types of loops and pretty much covered what you can do with them and whatnot. So yeah, that's lesson number three. I hope you learned something. Um, if you make something cool and you're glad that I'm teaching these lessons, then send it to me and I'll be glad to look at it. And if you have a problem, I'll try to help you. So yep, that's pretty much it. Um, stay tuned for lesson four.